S3 storage is now available natively right on fly.io. I tested out the basics of working with this new storage option, putting together a cool little app that I then deployed on fly. I put it together CRUD style because I thought it would be fun and I also have been wanting to test out the possibility of replacing a traditional database with S3 storage instead. I'm going to show you the app as well as the setup, but first I want to thank the team that made this option possible and the sponsor of this video, Tigris Data. Tigris is globally distributed S3 compatible object storage that provides low latency anywhere in the world. With Tigris, the objects you store are automatically stored in the region closest to the request and then distributed intelligently. Tigris isn't just storage though, they also handle the caching, which provides strong consistency. Meaning when there are changes to objects, any operations after that immediately receive the latest object or list. Instead of talking about their service though, I'm just going to show you what it was like to use it. So let's get to the good stuff. Let's go check out this app. This looks like a traditional CRUD application, except for every data operation is interacting with a Tigris bucket instead of a traditional database. So what did it take to make this happen? Well, the answer might surprise you. Let's rewind to the beginning and look at the setup. First things first, you have to have an account to fly.io. I previously done a video on fly. If you haven't seen that, check the description. You're definitely gonna wanna check that out. After you have a fly account, then you'll need to come to tigrisdata.com. Clicking either of the get started buttons brings you to the get started section of their docs. There's a link if you need to create a fly account. Otherwise you can go up and click early access or click here to go to the early access form. Fill and submit this form. It's pretty straightforward. For myself, I submitted this on February 2nd and I was approved February 3rd. Comment below if you experienced a longer wait time than that. Uh, I did not encounter anybody saying that they had any delay in getting access. That was my experience. A couple of quick notes, Tigris is not charging during beta access and when they do start charging, they will be cheaper than AWS in most every way except data transfer. They have not finalized their pricing for data transfer, so I can't verify that part yet. The always free tier is also a bit more generous than that of AWS in a few ways. AWS offers 2,000 put and 20,000 git requests and Tigris gives you 20,000 put and 100,000 git requests. The total storage size though and data transfers are the same at 5 gigabytes and 100 gigabytes respectively. Once you have the notification saying you are approved, you can come back to the docs here and it really is just as straightforward as this documentation is. One item I will be asking them to mention in their documentation is that if you have the old version of the fly CTL, you will get an error if you try to run the fly storage command. So just be sure to update to the latest version of fly CTL and you won't have any issues. For me, I wasn't using an existing already deployed application. So I ran the command from the home directory of my SvelteKit app. If you're doing this from the directory of an existing fly application, I believe this statement right here means that if you already have a fly app and you run this command, it's going to stage these secrets for you. And then the next time you run fly deploy, it will automatically push them into your secrets section in your dashboard for that specific application. I'm going to try to confirm that before my next video. So for me, I ran the command and it spits out everything that you need here in order to get started including creating a bucket to use right away. They do have instructions on using the AWS CLI tool to create additional buckets if you need to. And I did test this out. This works exactly as they say. If you're already using AWS, you can just use the dash dash endpoint dash URL flag and then put the endpoint in there. That way, if you're already using it, it won't override your defaults. But they also make note, if you do decide to use them permanently, here is how to make these changes permanent. With the keys for access and a bucket created, the rest is done in the source of whatever application you're making. For me, I'm using a SvelteKit app, but deploying it to fly with a Docker container. So I had to add the AWS-SDK slash client-S3 package to my project, and away I went. Although before you leave your terminal, one quick note, you do need to install the adapter node module as well. And then inside of your svelte.config.js, you need to swap out this adapter for the one from adapter-node. 
If you're wanting to deploy this, as always, the source code for this entire repository available in my GitHub. So go check that out if you want the source code. So let's get into the actual routes. Inside of our pluspage.server.js, that's where the actual integration with the S3 buckets is happening. In order to make this work, you just take those secrets that the fly storage create command spits out, you put them in your env file, and then you import them into your server files as you would for any other application. I'm also making use of crypto to spit out some IDs, and then we just have the S3 client and a put object command for creating objects. In the application where I'm creating users, we fire up the S3 client, we pass in all of our environment variables, and then I'm stringifying the object here and sending that to the put object command with the bucket. I'm using the email address as the key. That's going to be my uh, unique identifier for finding that user later. And then we just do an s3.send and put that command in there and we create our objects. This is pretty straightforward stuff. It was really easy to set up. So let's go take a look at the read route. And again, you import your env. For here, you're going to need the list objects v2 command and the get object command. And what we do here is you fire up the client and then you have the list objects v2. You give it the bucket name. In this case, I'm also setting max keys. And what this does is says, hey, just grab 10 results. If there's more results than what you set the key to, and mind you, the max is 1000, it will pass in a token that you can then use to send a subsequent request to get more results if you want to paginate the results here. So with the list of all the objects that exist, you then need to go through and pull them one at a time using the get object command, pulling out the key from the list and sending it along with the bucket name to pull out each object. I then send that to this little helper function called stream to string that's just converting all of that into a string. Then I then pass it to json.parse and return that to my read page where I interact with it just like you would any regular JSON. So there we have our read. Let's go check out our update. Inside of our update route, we still need all the same environment variables, of course. We still need the list and the get so that we know what our objects are actually listing so that you can select which one you want to update. You're also going to need the put object command from the create route and then the delete object. Since there isn't a way to actually update an object, what happens is if you just do the put command again, you will create a new object and you'll essentially have two objects floating out there in space. Now, if you do a request, the system is going to give you the latest object, but you don't want to just continually create new objects that will be floating out there forever, eating up your space. So I suggest you just delete the old object and then create a new one. So that is what I did. In order to accomplish that, we just do the same stuff. We fire up the client, we list them all, we stringify them and then parse out the JSON, sending that to our UI to let a user select. Anytime they want to update one, we fire up a new client, we delete the old object, and then just create the new object. Our delete route is even more straightforward. We still do most of the same stuff. The only difference here is that for deleting an object, all you do is fire up the client and pass in the key. So there is our app. It was pretty cool. I really enjoyed putting this together. And I do have to say that integrating Tigris with Fly is super straightforward. Everything's handled through the Fly CTL. There's nothing special to do here that you wouldn't need to do if you're using S3 storage in any other platform. You create the bucket and you access it with your ID and your access key and the bucket name and you interact with it just like you would any other S3 environment using the Amazon AWS SDK. Super straightforward, really easy to use, a lot of fun. If you enjoyed this video, then stay tuned because in another video, I put together another app, and this one is super cool as well. This has been something I've been wanting to tackle for some time, but what I'm doing in this application is I'm using a GPT to create training data for another language model. And then once approved, sending it to an S3 to store it. I'm gonna be dropping that one shortly after dropping this one. So be sure to check back often. Take care and as always, have a great day.